Hey guys, in case you missed it, uh, this month over on the Patreon, we're releasing a bunch of content. This week's was Designing Color and Light, Manipulating Color. Now, this is the third part in this ongoing series. It's about 75 minutes jam-packed of demos, lectures, and paint-overs. Furthermore, this month we have in-depth Blender content coming out hard surface design and a massive eight part you know illustration comprehensive guide using advanced techniques coming at the end of the month so of course you can sign up today and get instant access to all of this and over 90 more what is that is that your good stuff or no no this, this is actually another thing i bought when i was up there i love this it's chocolate flavored whiskey bird dog mm. It's delicious. It tastes like a Tootsie Roll mixed with whiskey. I have not experienced that, and I feel like it I is need to. fantastic. But Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania, apparently has decided that the liquor stores no longer carry chocolate-flavored whiskey. So when I saw this in Baltimore, you know I grabbed a big bottle of it. Yes, guys. Welcome to the Brush Sauce <laughs> Critique Center. Wait, I got <laughs> Jessica with us tonight. <laughs> She's got some <laughs> chocolate whiskey. <laughs> yeah, this is National like Bourbon Day, guys, in case you didn't know. So we're doing this on point. I have a old-fashioned. Um, so yeah, these critiques might be a little more honest. They might be a little more silly. That's kind of the dice you roll sometimes when you submit work. Adam couldn't join us. He was very, very busy, apparently. Um, but yeah, we're here. We picked out our 10. Um, I'll, I'll say my two cents about the other ones uh, after the fact. And then, of course, I'll lay out whatever new... Uh, challenge details they will be after and for those wondering if you want to submit all you gotta do is click the link below for the uh the discord the brush sauce discord and there'll be like certain headings in there you can kind of follow through or just ask any of the lovely community members all right so let's just go through these here all right raha how you doing thank you for your submission here i like this this looks great the colors are fantastic um, and the theme, which I forgot to mention, of course, is is Metropolis, right? Which was an old 1920s movie and remade as a 90s anime. And, you know, it's got like futurism, uh, robotic ladies and things like that. All my favorite things. But yeah, that's kind of like the general theme going. So yeah, with this said, with that said, I think it hits the point. How, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I really liked this one. I like that it's, you know, a strong character piece and it focuses on this kind of quiet moment with this character um, there, there were two things that initially stood out to me about this piece. One is the materials. The all, all of the materials have kind of a same equality to them. So the feathers yes. look like the the walls look like her skin look like her hair. Everything looks kind of like it's made of the same material. And the other thing that um, I think has a lot more potential than is executed in this painting is the lighting. And so it actually took me a little bit to realize that the pipes behind her were supposed to be neon lights. And they actually don't read as lights. They read mm -hmm. as pink pipes. Um, and it wasn't until I was looking for the clues of like the little reflective pink light on the bird and her that I realized that those were supposed to be neon. And yeah. so the, the execution of the neon lights um, is, is an easy fix like to add in the effect of light. But it also makes me question why you chose to put a neon light um, directly in the line of direct light. And so thinking about the way that you have this set up, um, I just think it could be so much more interesting if you had not shown a bright white light directly onto the neon lights and let those neon lights play into the scene a lot more. Yeah, and I, I'd have to agree. This isn't like... And that's not an easy fix by any stretch of the imagination here because it's essentially kind of relighting the whole scene. But you have such a cool drawing going on and the the, the lighting choices really are at odds with each other. I, I would probably, you know, if I was going just for the quickest fix possible, would, you know, try to like force as much of that light out of it. You know, I get a little bit of blue in there get a little bit of you know, green and just kind of like make that really dark night version right and because then you can really like okay if this is like purple 
pink neon colors, you could start to play those up and they'll actually look like they're glowing and more, you know, emitting light and how that can affect, right, the various metals right on on the character, right? You could really see start to play that up. And I think that's part of it, you know, that that is really you know, has a lot of room for growth is that lighting and it's like right there's like a giant sun almost in front of the character that just saps a lot of interest essentially kind of out of it which is unfortunate yeah because i i think that the the neon pipes behind her is a much more unexpected choice as opposed to um a direct white light shining on the scene and so I feel like you can get a lot more emotional narrative out of those those neon lights behind her than mm. you can out of this generic floodlight. Yeah, the other thing is what I think is worth mentioning is the cropping choice. You have a lot yeah. of unused space at the top, right? Nearly like all of this. And then you're cropping out just the toes on the figure where it, it seems like, you know, if you come down a bit more, the character is then going to be able to fit you know properly in your in your space yeah. and you could also i mean it wouldn't even hurt it to even expand a little not to like a square <laughs> format but like give it like a little more wiggle room to kind of push yeah. a yeah. lot of that you know and then you could add ambient lights affecting all the all the metals and and things like that which you know the drawing the core drawing is good but so many little i think alterations could start to and i think in general you really want to avoid chopping off hands and feet and i yep. noticed that you also have the hand going behind this this block placed in the corner so that is chopped off as well and it's Ooh. one of those things where when you start chopping off hands and feet it becomes like it leads to the impression that you're uncomfortable painting hands and feet and you're finding ways to hide them and there's also something very expressive about, um, I mean, yep. the hands to some extent, but especially, or the, somewhat the feet, but especially the hands, where there's a lot in the hands and feet that you can use to convey more expression and gesture in the figure. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a lost opportunity when you chop them off, but it also stands out to the like human eye as a very obvious thing that you're hiding. Yep. It really does. And it, I feel like it's also one of those things I've heard a lot of art directors say they notice um, very quickly if you're hiding hands and feet um, that you're uncomfortable painting them. Yeah, I'm just pulling in a little extra. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's some object over there, right? Just like a little ambient light to kind of kind of phase out some of that stuff. But yeah, I like okay. I like the theme. I like you know the drawing of it. It's just, yeah, needs some, you know, tweaks with the lighting and, and atmosphere in, like you mentioned, the materials. Hey, Felix, thank you for your submission here. Again, this is really cool. This is really, you know, evocative of, like, the, the architectural styles. It definitely references a lot of Hugh Ferris's work. Uh, my biggest like thing, beautiful. yeah, like, I like the lighting, but there's some definitely some compositional choices, I think, that would help essentially kind of balance this out just just a bit more including having something you know up here like it's very yeah, open my, right it, yeah my eye goes right up to that bright yellow and just goes off of the edge of the canvas you need something to kind of stop the eye from just disappearing up there it, it could be as simple as just like having some atmosphere and clouds blocking that out <laughs> maybe if you want to get creative having like some ships to even having some negative space uh space some shapes rather right kind of peeking <laughs> peeking through right out like this right like you can i'm not doing a very poor job you know just like below you know with a cl in between the clouds uh, and then ships you know will offset all the visual weight that's on that side of the painting Especially, I think, if you can find a way to design them in such a way that it leads the eye back into um, the focal point, which is this main building in the center. But as it as it stands, that bright 
yellow corner is actually competing with the 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 central skyscraper for attention because it is so dominant and so bright. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have a little break up of that, bring that down, and then I I think you know I would probably unless there's a reason for the entire city to be derelict and abandoned, you gotta find something, I think, to light up there to also. You know, whether it's a singular room or floor, so you have little lights like that. Maybe it's, again, something down here. But it, I think you could add a lot of narrative amplifications by illuminating all of it or just some of it and not take the easy way out of, you know, just simply not having any of it. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of mileage you can gain from just, like, like having one area of it where it looks like there might be a person there inside of i i like the fact that this feels kind of abandoned and ruin like um but yeah when you when the whole thing feels so so derelict and so abandoned if you can bring in just one area where it looks like there's there's life or activity there i think it will add a lot of interest to the image and make it feel more active rather than passive mm -hmm. and then you could use like yeah. value and color to really push some of the forms. A lot of this gets flat way mm -hmm. too quick. And you have an opportunity to make things look wet, to make things look shiny. Um, and of course to point with direction, right? Right up to that focal point. So you get, there's yeah, like basically right multiple benefits for doing like small touches on things. And it will make it, you know, just feel a little bit more finished. You had the occasional light on or so, and then it's like working really, really good. But yeah, I think it's great overall. Yeah, and another thing that I notice a lot with paintings like this, where you use these dark framing elements, um, very quickly it often goes to just empty. Like you put a little bit of detail like so that it has some structure to it. But these areas, even though they're framing elements, are still part of the painting, and there should be some sort of visual interest there. Like, if you think about this dark area, that comprises, what, 30% of the painting? 40% yeah, of the good painting? good amount, a good amount. And so I feel like there should be something there that warrants, um, that's beautiful, that warrants that space in the painting, as opposed to, you know, this is the dark area that's out of focus that you shouldn't pay attention to. So bring a little bit of life, something to it. You can use value grouping to keep it subordinate to the rest of the painting, but it should still have some sort of visual quality to it that, that has value to the rest of the painting. It, it shouldn't just See, be treated like dead space is what even, I'm saying. Right, even if it's like a little bit of ambient light like this reflecting through various windows, you know, or if you want to just even illuminate you know, the pieces in between, a bunch of little touches will go mm -hmm. a long way. Very beautiful piece. I love this one. It reminds me of Blade Runner. It's one of my favorite movies. Cyril. How are we doing here? Blade Runner is a fantastic movie. Everybody should so experience. <laughs> Everybody should experience. And the sequel, just as importantly. I I love I love the new one, but I, I do really enjoy the old one too. But the new one, mm. phew, gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Yeah, this is really cool. This there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Look at how many figures. See, guys, you can't it's skip ambitious. out on expressions because it's all these kind of little people's. These people in the, in the shots here, their expressions and their... In, like, look at this dude here. He's having himself a time. He knows it's Bourbon Day. He's having a great time. Actually, I don't know. He's, like, kind of creepily, like, staring at her. He's like, I got I got some medicine. He's, like, trying to pitch them. It's like a board meeting. I'm trying to figure out the narrative here, which is... Very interesting. Yeah. And this is, like, the judgmental prick that hides in the corner. <laughs> it's just like... Rrr. Well, he's got a mustache, so... He's got his. I, I really, I really like how you have arranged the figures and created kind of this shape with them and this leading line coming in with the figures and yep. that arm of the guy leaning over whatever he's leaning on. I, I think that that is all really beautifully done. One of the things that throws me off about the figures is I feel like they are different sizes. Yeah. So they don't feel. They, they feel like they were individually well referenced, but in context with each other, um, they don't feel proportional or in perspective with each other. Like the the guy leaning over the chair with the, the large handlebar mustache feels yep, way too guy. large compared the to the figures guy. around him. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas the girl leaning against the window feels a little too small compared to the rest of the figures. Mm -hmm. So I think there is just a little bit there that's kind of throwing the eye off into how they're relating to each other. Or, let's be honest, this is going to be me in like 20 years. <laughs> that's a hell of a mustache. I hope I can get on to that level of prestige <laughs> of a mustache. It takes like... And one of the other things that's throwing me off, you put so much attention to detail in the, the acting of the characters, their facial yeah, expressions. This dude's a giant. That is, all of that is really beautiful. But then when it comes to the setting, when it comes to the window, when it comes to the chair that she's sitting in, those don't feel like they belong oh, yeah. in this world. Yes. It, it feels like those are almost like placeholders for the rest, like inside the painting. But when you look at all of the design of the characters, when you look at this strange uh, cyborg robot creature, those, like, I wouldn't believe that that chair is in that world or that that window frame is in that world. Mm -hmm. I, I, everything here is leading me to believe that there's something like some sort of Art Nuevo, Art Deco, you know, very h high classy um, design elements that should be here rather than kind of a very generic modern looking chair and a blank window frame so i would say that the same attention to detail that you put into designing these characters i would put yep. into designing the setting that they're in as well this is going to come back i from what i've seen for the rest of these entries but like the level of fidelity that gives it a nice evenly kind of finished work like this is almost like two paintings mm -hmm. at odds with each other in the same kind of space like you have all these beautifully drawn rendered characters and then you have something that's barely at a color sketch level in the background barely like it was bare minimum you you don't and not not even the background the windowsill and stuff i would say the same and the thing chair about... and the chair and mm -hmm. the table far 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 too rough like look at the work of like norman rockwell and a lot of the artists of his time, like these classical illustrators, well, now they're referred to like these very classic base illustrators, it's got an even finished look. And, and therefore, like once all of this is pretty much on the same level, that's when it would be finished. And no <laughs> sooner, because it just looks, it looks too undone, unfortunately, because like the concept and a lot of the hard work is already done from this. But don't neglect what's left. But also, like... It, it's also uh, there's a level of finish i agree that that's missing in a lot of those elements but also there's there's design choices there's missed opportunities because you have this like very generic window frame behind them yeah there's a lost opportunity for like some beautiful arches or beautiful shapes that could have framed the scene in a much more interesting way than a basic rectangle because she's sitting in a chair that is just a generic square chair as opposed to like beautiful arches or beautiful shapes that could help frame her or separate her from the background like there's so much more that you could do with those elements that would make this um, a much more interesting painting um, and in, in addition it'll make it feel more finished as well when you treat them with the same attention to detail that you treated the the figures yeah like having like little wall lights and stuff mm -hmm. like up there adding like a pattern or texture back here wall light see like in each little section you could like go through and there are things to do that'll make it feel so much like in designing the table it was far too rough and brushy and it still is and then right designing the chair just finish yeah. it and then the, watch the material on this robot feels very unreferenced and flat um, but yeah. the design is good but the, the rendering but compared to the characters it feels really like it you didn't know what you were doing you didn't have enough reference or unfinished and i think with the metal like you've painted the metal in a very similar way that you've painted most of the other metal or other materials except for you've just made the whites whiter but there's a difference in the way that the the fall off of light to shadow is so you can't blend it the same way that you blend the other materials there will be sharp transitions from light to dark in a way that's not apparent on skin or mm -hmm. you know the fabric or the wall or any of that stuff so just i i would work on the materials a little bit in that one sammy what a fantastic piece you have here you got great colors you got a good composition there's the narrative. story the narrative 
This is like the complete package. I love package. the storytelling in this one. This It's on point. There's so much that you have implied with just like this a very simple scene. It's beautiful. I love it. And guys, this for the, for the most part has a very even level of finish. Like there's nothing that's like so abruptly, you know, in a distracting way, unfinished compared to the rest, which is good. There's, mm -hmm. there's room for improvement here. Uh, but I want to, I want to leave this up to Sammy at this point. Sammy, I'm going to, I'm going to nitpick harder than any other part of this painting, Oof. you know, that, that's like, you got to address this. If I, if you the hit face. pause, right, <laughs> if you can pause right now. Can you guess what that is? I'm sorry. <laughs> Just I spit on it spoiler out. I blame the bourbon. <laughs> I can hold it back. <laughs> Jess, what do you, how do you feel about that face? There, there's no face. Why did you take away her face? It's like the heart of the painting. Yep. And I, I understand you're trying to make this Good feeling thing. of light, like this this brilliant glow of the light around her, but you can't take away the face. There's all of the, the painting leads to this moment, her coming out in the sun on the shoulders of this robot, and you took away the face off of the, the most important part of the painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... Definitely just render that up. I don't doubt that you can do it. Maybe it was a time mm -hmm. thing. Just do it. The other larger design choice I would do is to increase the scale of all these uh, uh, robotic men, the Ottomans, right? Like, not the, yeah. um, not this lady in the back. She's cool. She's perfect for what she is and at that distance. But, yeah. like, all these dudes, or at least most of them, I would say break this line right in terms of this is just purely composition conjecture and, nonsense right like yeah the the fact that they are like a tangent and, to and, that ledge yep. of the building blue and is purple a problem. you gotta bring them mm -hmm. you gotta bring them up Bad. and keep that the architecture the same good mm -hmm. so easy and the fit. overlap will give it more depth yep see like just like get them probably about that scale see i put let's put you yeah, know put them on up the same level but see that'll balance it out too because they won't look quite as far away too they'll look like a little yeah. bit closer as well you know i think that'll just help it across the across the board especially if you can keep that like keep the architecture down lower so that you don't have them like right in line with that that baseboard for the building yep Another thing that um, I think, I, the design of this painting is really good. So a lot of it comes down to like how you've chosen to finish or polish it. And the birds are another area that to, to me feels Jessica like... Jessica would know, it, guys. She would know. <laughs> the, the part to me that feels like it really could use a little more love is the birds. Because they are the parts of the composition that jump out to you, like you can't ignore those birds coming forward into the foreground um, on the left side of the painting. But when your eye goes over there, there's not a lot there for your eye. Like you know what they are, but any time you spend there, it kind of just falls apart. It gets muddy and mushy really quick. And so the parts of the painting that are going to be that important or have that much attention on them, they need to have some sort of, painterly quality to them that makes them beautiful to look at and the the way they're treated right now with the the edges and stuff i i just think that the birds need more time so that they don't just feel haphazardly thrown in there and for the full context of that jessica's in a bird painting group and she paints a <laughs> lot of birds take her like word for it birds. don't listen to me i don't paint birds freaking but, ever i mean I, if they were in the background, like if they were just there for scale, really far, really it would far. be different. But because you've chosen to bring them to the foreground, they there needs to be a little more design in the the, the edges, a little more design, a little in the more brush. care. Yeah, yeah. On that note, in the background, I, in the meanwhile, like the same treatment mm -hmm. with the door. The door is almost like a third of this painting. You got to put more effort in. Same with these statues. They're a massive design component of it. You're not, I'm not saying you to go in there and pixel out all of this, but like give us something as the audience, you know, to kind of chew on yeah, with so, some features. Some, some shadows. And yeah. Minimal. Mm -hmm. Minimal stuff. Okay. Otherwise, it's great.
keep going. Th this is a beautiful piece. Um, I just feel like it just needs more time, like more attention to detail um, to finish it. Lex. <laughs> I just think of Apocalypse from X-Men when I see this guy. This is Apocalypse very cool. Vibe. Yeah, I this is this see. is a good guy. This is impactful. Like a, a good center composition. I think with this though, the lighting cool. is definitely too flat. Even for like a simple monochromatic kind of painting like see it's all it's like blue on blue if you select everything on the interior side take the blue out right add a few neutrals see neutral neutral shift gears into the warmer zone boom 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 and then add a little accent of yellow and green you're gonna get and i see i did that one little area you do that for everything on that side of the glass from apocalypse back there it's gonna look great because you're gonna start yeah. to get a lot of accents see Take the color and out. It, <laughs> when you when you separate the temperatures from that like background, you know, Shift. giant robot guy from the foreground, you're gonna get a lot more depth of field when all of that stuff in the room that he's in is all cool. And then when you can bring some warm into the area in the foreground where the scientists or people observing him are, it's it's gonna be more visually interesting. But it's also gonna create these two separate fields. It's going to tell us that these are you know like different areas of the painting um in addition to the values which you you have grouped the values a lot to do that but that you can do the same thing with the temperatures to create like a background and a foreground with the temperatures and it it'll be more interesting yeah just like you gotta set, have like some ambient lights hitting the backs and the sides mm -hmm. of these characters definitely these graphic shapes right like on the borders are little they're, they're a little too graphic yeah a little, little bit yeah. more and it, i think that one of the reasons they go graphic is because he's trying to use exclusively values to separate it as opposed to temperatures so when you're trying to just use the values you're like okay everything that's important is in this window this light so we're going to use dark to frame it but when you warm it up you won't have to go to black to frame it you'll be able to use the warmer shapes it will visually separate from that cool background jessica how do you feel about these the designs of these characters their posing <laughs> and know, their interaction you know how i feel so uh, one of the things that i mentioned about this piece is that the characters feel way less designed than the robot and the 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 window and all the stuff framing him it's like you have this really interesting scene and then you put these like very caricature cartoon like characters in front of it that feel very generic and there's not a lot of design choices to them so you have like the the silhouette of the guy in the 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 coat and the top hat you got the scientist with the glasses you got kind of like the crazy scientist with the hair and the cloak but all of them crazy. feel like they feel like cardboard cutouts. They don't feel designed. They don't feel like individual characters that have all of these tiny, interesting nuances in the way that the robot and the window do. And so I would just suggest that you bring um, some of that creativity and design el element to the three figures in the foreground as well so they don't feel quite so generic. I, you know what it is? It's a combination of the capes and the henchman gloves. They both have both, and it <laughs> it screams like way too much like Nickelodeon cartoon. And and the guy in the the coat and the top hat again is it's very generic looking. But There's I think I it. think he's finer. He, he bothers like, I'm cool me with at least out of yes. the three of them. Okay, we agree on that much. Like yeah, yeah. But I think because like there is a distinction between him and the other two, like they there is like they're going out of their way to make these characters distinctive, but like it, it kind of comes off in the wrong way. Yeah. And I think about, okay, so they're wearing capes. Well, are the capes like, is there a way to make them feel less generic? Are there symbols on them? Are there design elements to them? Is there some sort of logo, some iconography that would make this interesting is, I mean, we're in this futuristic world, obviously. Are there some unexpected uses of light and technology in their costuming? Like, think about these characters and find ways to make them more interesting and more in line with the rest of the painting. Perfect.
All right. Thank you. Thank you. For, uh, Sorry. I got this hidden. Lex. Was it? Go Lex. <laughs> I couldn't see it. <laughs> Dash. Oh my. This is, this is this very. This is ambitious. Yeah. Super similar in style, you know, to the 90s anime with all the nice colorful buildings, everything out like this. And it, yeah, you got like this nice cool building here that's seemingly you know, the focal point point and then you know what let's just zoom in let's get this under the microscope the first thing that jumps out to me about this one is the um the way that all the buildings kind of have the same like they're they're all a different local color and then the way that you shaded them is kind of like that local color but shaded and each building has a different local color but shaded and highlighted and so it feels a little bit like legos to me yes as opposed to a design choice of the colors across the different buildings and i think some of that also comes from a lack of value grouping so again each building is kind of like highlights and shadows individual to that building as opposed to the the picture as a whole so you're not getting that value grouping that tells our eyes like ignore these buildings pay attention to these buildings yeah, designing see. leading lines coming into the focal points of the image yeah like why not knock that really far <laughs> out and then go back in and add just like in in the in the movie you know you'll see like atmosphere blue blue fun right atmosphere light and stuff kind of coming even over right a lot of that it you know just to build so i'm just going to do this yeah because another thing that that stands out to me about this image also is the the way that you've treated edges all of the edges are very hard very geometric which makes it, it seems like the obvious choice when you're you're painting something like this where all of the buildings are hard edged like the material is hard edged and they're very geometric but what happens when you treat everything that same way is everything becomes equally important. All of the, you know, window lights yep. and the skyscraper far like into the background that we shouldn't be paying attention to are equally important, equally as important as the shapes of the skyscrapers that are the focal points of the image. And so you've got to find a way to consolidate those values and those edges to, to let the eye know that this is okay to disappear. This isn't an important area. Yeah, and you can see too many of the seams kind of busting through mm -hmm. in, in regards to your techniques. If you look at all the, the you know, the, the top artists and even the experienced artists that are using 3D, that are using photos, using paint, you're not going to see a, a an abundance of like artifacting, digital artifacting. See like weird texture anomalies where things are going mm -hmm. kind of crazy there. See like this is driving like right, it, it, it's sloppiness through and through like... Kind of like well, how yeah, that's like mixing. Even this, this road that's going behind this bottom helicopter, yep. and then the road kind of this suddenly area. disappears, and it becomes like very like like buildings, but nothing feels in the space like it's supposed to. The the eye will register all of that and create a very disoriented feeling. Yep. So it's it's the technical side, and the, like you said, the materials all very kind of same. Everything's the same. Everything looks like a, I guess as a consequence, kind of looks like a Lego. The other thing is. Yeah, you, you get like the purple building, the blue building, the green building, and you got to break see, that up. Like, yeah. Massive digital artifacting going on here with transparency. Mm -hmm. it, there's loads of that, which ends up kind of bringing the quality, uh, you know, down quite a bit. The other thing is to like, look at what your space is doing for your scene. You know, like you have this whole side Profit. of the canvas that is doing nothing it's adding nothing appeal wise in, in line form direction context to this this is what you're trying to sell is this building this avenue in this road and this scene is you know struggling with trying to keep the quality consistent but you're also adding nearly double the canvas space to it of problems just yeah. like cut your losses get to the point and then you know streamline it. right like for the composition unless you have a really good way to negate all of that information on the right side of the canvas and lead the eye into 
that lit up skyscraper, there's no point in having all of that over there because it's not, it's not, there's, you haven't spent enough time over there that is beautiful to look at. It's not creating beautiful shapes that lead you into the focal points of the painting. And so what is the point of all that stuff on that side? You're better off focusing your attention to detail on the area that would actually make a beautiful painting. Yeah. And, you know, when you cut the work in half, then you'll be able to spend way more time focused on these edges, these lights, these colors, and grouping the values in a way that creates a beautiful image. Yeah, I was just pulling up, like, a little example of, like, what, you know, Rob Ruppel's doing here with his work, you know, into the Spider-Verse. See, like, it, a lot of it is blending together with very clear graphic shapes that are you know more or less harmonized like there, there is a flow to them you know vertical this is pushing over to here but it all real, circles back to this real quick before you move away from those images if you could go back to them real quick this <laughs> if one? you look a lot yeah a lot of the buildings are different colors like they are in your yep. image but if you look at the way that the light and the shadow is treated the light always pushes towards orange or yellow and the the shadows always push towards blue or cool as opposed to here's a blue building here's a purple building here's a green building here's a yeah. red building there is a consistency in the temperature shift between the light and the dark that mm -hmm. makes it feel cohesive That's another one. um see like kind of like this too and these shots are tough to do because they're a little more overcast so you don't have that direct beam of light but you could see, like, in terms of, like, the seams of the image, like, you don't really focus on the technique. Like, oh, he used a photo over here or a 3D thing over here. It just blends together seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like, the quality with, with an image like yours that you want to get on par with. It's something kind of like that. But, yeah, Rob Ruppel, check him out. Really good dude. All right. Moving forward. Forward. But this is a really cool piece. Like, it, this was a really ambitious choice to go straight for the cityscape. That's that's a lot of work. Bad concept parts. <laughs> How you doing? I'm going to have a drink on that note. <laughs> As we all should. Mm-hmm. Ah, good time. All right. So, shout out to everybody at the Monday night hangout we couldn't attend tonight to get I'm this sorry. done. sorry. <laughs> we love everybody who missed them. It's true. All right. So, bad concept. You got a lot of good ideas here and even a really cool composition. Like, I love yeah. techie sci-fi buildings. I love synthetic light wave sh fishes. And I love cyber chicks and their cat. I'm not a big cat person, but okay, cat's cool. Yeah, but you have to have a side <laughs> up. You have to have a sidekick. <laughs> I had a cat for like 18 years. It just pissed all over the place. Fuck that Oh, thing. <laughs> my God. That was a bad cat. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Um, the, two, the two things that stand out to me about this image is the placement of the the main character and the choice of lighting Ooh, those yeah. are the things that immediately stood out to me about this painting i felt like it was a missed opportunity that you chose to put her kind of off to the side of the fish rather than frame her with the beautiful lights of the fish and the the tendrils of the fish so instead of it being kind of like all those things lead your eye to pay attention to her it became fish vertical line fish and the main character and you want to create rather than like this linear progression of different notes you want to integrate them in a way so they wrap around each other and lead your eye to the the heart of the piece which is the main character with her cat and then the other thing that threw me off about this painting is that you chose to have these bright fish this neon light this this holographic effect mm but you put it in like the middle of the day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that everything Same was, page. was, was blown out. Everything was, you know, you, you almost didn't notice that they were holograms that they were made of light because you chose to put it in like the middle of a sunny day, which I understand there, there is an aesthetic quality to a sunny day versus a darker nighttime scene, a more low key scene. But it, I feel like it really was underselling the key point of the painting, which was this beautiful holographic glowing fish. And so I, I think you could get a lot more dramatic mileage and a lot of unexpected aesthetic appeal by by putting this into a darker 
lighting setting and letting those fish actually glow and come to life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holographic fish. <laughs> and again, like, it draws to mind, you know, Blade Runner, and that is a movie, the, the new one, where they did a really good job of creating these beautiful holographic visual effects um, that were so surreal and beautiful, and the... Uh, the quality of neon lights, um, which, like the first painting we looked at, again, that underselling the beauty of neon lights by just putting them under bright, normal white light. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like th there's no point having neon lights or holographic lights uh, if you're going to put it directly under a, a bright white floodlight. Yep. Get there, get your silhouette to pop. And then you light it up with all the other lights on top of that, which I'm not gonna... And I, <laughs> I honestly don't have the precision right now to properly articulate. But, you know, you want to see the silhouettes of these buildings. That much is clear. You know, kind of like I was doing over there. Get all of these colors. All these colors need to party together. Um, you know, bring it all. Blend them. And then play up the lighting. Illuminate all these buildings. You could add, like, a cool red light like off camera, this one, right? Like behind this. So this would illuminate, I'm gonna go color dyed. It might not look good, right? Like as I intend right now, see, but like get like a nice red light hitting like the back of that character, hitting a few of these pieces, just like right here, you know, just leading there, surround the silhouette with like the light, you know, like there's a yeah, lot of potential here and you, it's like missing it. You can get such beautiful shapes with the fish, like framing that main character, the fins kind of like curving around her um, and creating this this beautiful visual flow with that, that I feel like when you push her off to the side is really, really missed out on. Yeah. I'm really good <laughs> otherwise, though, right? I, I... I know that it's a dramatic change when you change the. the this is not an easy fix. Key. Not, yeah, I'm. I tried to make it look easier than it is. Didn't even do a good job at that. But it's like, if you're gonna have holographic fish, lights, fireworks, yeah. you gotta go all the way with it and do a darker it, backdrop. It's like trying to paint fireworks, but then like having them set off at noon. Like it, it, it just. You're underselling the main point of Dude, the painting. My three-year-old would love fireworks at noon, even though she <laughs> looked blind trying to find them. But who's this? Who's this? Raven. Ah, Raven. Hey, Raven. Raven. I haven't seen Raven around in a while. Whoa. <laughs> this is this, this is, is an intense image. <laughs> He's Holy always shit. got it. <laughs> Look at He's this. He's always got yeah, an unusual take on Ravens things. Ravens come out on top of, on some of these challenges, if I remember. Look at this, so, dude. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, there's two things that throw me off about this painting. One is the fact that we have a guy standing ankle deep in blood red water right next to a boat that's speeding by. So... Like, th that really challenges my suspension of disbelief. The fact that he's only ankle deep in water that a boat is also speeding by in. But then the other... And maybe that makes sense. I don't know. But it, visually, it looks very strange. I think even if you were to have him standing on a rock or a raft, it would feel less strange than if he was standing right next to a boat. If that boat can travel in that shallow of water. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then... The other thing that throws me off is the way that you have pieced this all together. Like, he feels like this character, you've put no thought into the design of him. He feels like clip art from, like, some sort of hick or schmuck, like, in some rural area hey, hey. fishing that doesn't fit in this world that you've designed. And I think it's okay to have someone that looks rural or, you know, like... Upstate Florida? Yeah, someone that doesn't is like incongruent with their surroundings in some way, but I feel like there there needs to be some intentional design choices. So there's some clues that link him in with his environment. Something to tell us that you didn't just take clip art of a guy standing in a river and then transport it 200, 300 years in the future to this sci-fi futuristic setting. Yeah. So the way that you design the clothing, the way that you design the fishing rod, the the hat, like 
there needs to be some things there that tell us he belongs in this environment. Have you talked about the color of the water? I did mention it was blood red. Does that yeah, count? It yeah, it should be a lot more <laughs> right reflective of like what the um mm -hmm. of what the environment was doing, you know, like right blue turquoises. It, I mean that that would make sense. That's why it's it stands out. Right. Like, in, a, in a in a sinful you, sort of way. If you look at the water, it reflects the environment around it as opposed to kind of having this local color. When you made it that red, it just made it look like it was made out of blood versus, you know, it was a reflective, clear liquid. There also is a massive flattening of forms in this mid-range area. Like, I think, you know, we'd want to see, like, the silhouettes, which I'm going to do in a very blunt and childlike <laughs> manner right now. Oh, I'm on overlay. Let's blame overlay. Um... But like you see, you can, you can kind of see these shapes, but you also kind of can't. Like we should see like the shapes and the silhouettes of the silo, you know, the bridges. Particularly see like up here, right where it's a lot closer toward us. There's like a weird blue light back here that's just like blowing everything out. <laughs> you know? It, yeah, nothing there's, looks like it's affected you got yellows, by the Yellows, greens, light. blues, reds. I mean, this is a this is a color yeah. fiesta. You and have the, the, the boat that looks like it's lit up by a purely orange light. You have the bridge that looks like it's lit up by a blue light, except for where that red light is on the, where it's coming off yeah, the like canvas. Yeah, like, this is getting hit with this orange, right? Like, why is nothing else up here getting mm -hmm. hit with that, you know, light? It it's or, or the back of the guy that would be standing in the same field of light. Unlike Mr. Florida here, you're, I think you're a bit <laughs> in over your head. With this, <laughs> with the color comp setup, I'm sorry, I of, this, whiskey. <laughs> of this setup, it's just scale it back like three levels, and then address one lighting source at a time. Is usually what you have to do with this. Yeah, I mean the way that you set this all up with so many um, indications of light sources and stuff. It it is a complex piece. Like there's a lot to this if you want to pull this off, and unifying the light source will go a long way to making this feel cohesive rather than cut and pasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and that's what it is. It's just, it, and, but like in even like a bit of a different way than the previous one we had looked at, right? Was it Lex's with the, with the massive city? It's just like it, some pieces do fit together kind of well. Like you have the nice gorgeous backdrop and the cityscape, but then it's the, like, it's almost like the lower we go, the more disjointed the themes, the subject, and of course the lighting gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this, true. this is somebody's like really good wide panel wallpaper right there. And then the lower you go, you know, it gets, it gets in more into trouble. So watch out for that. Yeah. I, I think just pay attention to your design choices. Like the boat and the figure should look like they're part of the same world. Miami Vice all over again right there. This one's really cool. I like this I like one. The, who's this? Tin. Tin, how you doing? I like this. I got a couple ideas. Um, all right. So, the, again, this has got a pretty good, consistent, even look to it. Yeah. yeah like, you got some blobby, right? Well. Some blobby brush strokes, which I like. But I still think, even with that said, like, these four individuals, right? These four dudes need to be a little bit more in focus than the dudes behind I, them. I feel like a lot of people bigger. like to paint in this way where it's very loose and very brushy. Everything kind of has this impressionistic quality. They're very resistant to bringing some areas into a little sharper focus, Let's... making it feel a little more finished and intentional. And it's not to say, like, you should take these four figures in the foreground and render them out so they look like you know, you know, some sort of Trump Loy, like super highly rendered, finished realism. But I, there should be more attention to detail in, in the focal areas of the painting. You should pay more attention to the edges. Some of the things should come into focus a little bit more and be resolved a little more clearly. And so I feel like if you were to bring that focal uh, quality to some of these four characters in the foreground, 
you don't have to lose a brushy quality to it, but you just need to look, make them look a little more refined. And it could, it could really bring this painting from feeling like a really nice study or sketch to a beautiful finished painting. Yep. Yeah. I also increased the size and the scale of the buildings because, like, they seem like very important. But again, you have so much head space right up top there. And nothing's really going on. Just mm -hmm. use yeah. it with your existing parameters, right? So like this, you got buildings in here. Same thing with all of these. Just literally grab their silhouettes. Those should be very easy to identify. In a, in a shot like this with lighting like this, you should be able to kind of see those. And yet we can't. Same and then with these. Also Another thing that's going on as he's cutting and, and moving things around is he's already got those main characters, so they're overlapping that pink sign behind, which is, I think, really important because when things don't overlap, they flatten out because your eye can't tell what's in front of what. Um, so you, you get this kind of like you have the figures, you have these neon signs. But when you start overlapping the figures over the neon signs, it suddenly creates this sense of depth in the space and mm. that it pushes that neon sign farther back which is uh, it makes a much stronger image but then the other thing that comes to mind when i'm looking at that is the fact that all of those neon signs all of those letters are yep. very crisp they're very like in focus compared to everything else in the scene and it, it could be as easy as running like a blur tool or like a median filter over those those letters so that they don't feel like they're as in focus as they are but right now the way that it's painted those letters and numbers feel very out of place because they are so crisp yeah maybe i think too it'll also balance it when the foreground characters are a bit more detailed yeah, but I, I still think I would, you know, I, it, it's kind of like you want to push and pull in opposite directions. I'd want to push those kind of further back into the blur of everything else and then pull the focal points, the characters and stuff, into focus a little more than those points. Not going to argue yeah. with that. She's <laughs> right. Listen to Jess. <laughs> Looks... Sometimes. Depends on the day and the bourbon. Depending on the bourbon. And the bourbon. And you gotta smoke. God, I'm jealous. We'll be smoking cigars again soon. Yes. Alright, what do we have here? Hey, Fede Corey. How you doing? Last but not least. <laughs> this is a, another piece I think is, is very ambitious. There's a lot to it that could be really cool. And it, it kind of, the, the execution holds it back. So you get areas that are very obviously cut and pasted in the, the, the floor, the chairs, the table. It all looks like you cut out a photo and plopped them into the scene. And then the areas that would be more dependent on you to paint never reach that level, like the, the character yep. or the window. So th that incongruity immediately throws the painting off. And so it's not helping the painting by being by throwing in something that has that level of you know like verisimilitude that the rest of the painting doesn't have these are also so consistent i would say these are th these are 3d and then again the problem this is a process i use is merge the 3d with the 2d stuff is that there's just too much of a difference in quality mm -hmm. and shape design between like the very realistic and the very very stylized that and the scale and is also hurting it it makes me wonder like why you would choose to take like the the chairs and the the table and you know go and find references and plop them into the painting but then not put that work into the character as opposed to finding models of a of finding people kind of standing in the pose that you're looking for right. with the light coming in the direction that you're looking for or you know uh, photographing a family member in that position or a friend or whatever and so that you can get a really good reference of what the arm looks like or what the hand looks like because for the hands yep. we just get like little blobs blobs the hair we get like just kind of this generic yellow shape 
And so you really need to bring, especially if it's a person, and it's the only person in the scene, when people look at the painting, their eye, that is going to be the first thing that they look at and notice is that the human doesn't look like a person. And so you really need to go in and reference that and design that in the way that you, you know, look for references for the room that you put this person into. Yeah, that's part of the problem is because the room looks so good. You got so much detail with reflected light, textures, pixel perfect. And then well, juxtaposed yeah, it right in. yeah, juxtaposed right next to it. Or, you know, it was rendered that way in three D. You you're you have to like get the character up to that level of clarity, even if it's not as detailed like that. You need very clean shapes and for like that lighting to really supplement and support that. And then next to the character, as we move back, let's take the conversation there, right? You have these designed, you know, shapes Oof. on the windows, mm -hmm. which is kind of what a few other, you know, submissions needed was like that level of like, yeah, I got to add these elements. But again, compared to these other elements in the same level of zoom, the same depth of field of the shot, they're like kind of rough. Um, they they look they look holders. like white noodles. They don't have like any true form. Like if you're looking at an architectural design, there's going to be like a consistent width to things. There's going to be consistent material. There's going to be consistent edges. And so instead of taking the time to really design those and draw those really well, they're kind of like mushy edges. They get skinnier and wider and skinnier and wider. And it, it throws the whole piece off because then there's other areas that you don't see that. And it's the sort of thing that makes me think that this person really would benefit from going back and working on, like, some fundamental drawing skills. Like, to draw this window really well, to draw this person really well. And a lot of, a lot of master painting painters, you know, classical painters, we look at their finished painting and what you don't see is that they would spend drawings. all this time doing all these drawings and all these studies like the the woman standing in front of the window you could do several studies you could do like several drawings perfecting that and getting that shape really nice or the same thing for the window like just really beautifully drawing that getting the the materials getting the edges so everything felt geometric and, and symmetrical and then, you know, when you take it into a painting like this, another thing I would suggest is rather than trying to draw that, like, in perspective, okay. you could easily draw the window, you know, like, straight on, create this beautiful ge geometric shape, and then put it into the painting and use the perspective tool to fit it into place rather than trying to draw all of that so that it ends up looking mushy and out of perspective. Yeah, I was trying to show before I like my windows went crazy. Sorry. You know, like that's now that, that was me. Like, but J C. Leindecker would do for his illustrations. It, it, I mean, it's not one, it's not two, it's several studies. See, like this of the subject matter mm -hmm. to get trying it. to figure out the folds, the the expression, the anatomy, the lighting. There mm -hmm. is no shortcuts to quality. Unless like you're doing just super three D and photo stuff, but even then you you need to like take the time to make sure it's working then, well. Yeah, like I feel like that's kind of what they tried to do. They plopped in some photos or three D of the couches and table and floor, and then it doesn't fit with the quality level of the figure and the window and everything around that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like okay, if you know three D can do X and such and such in an image that means you got to put double the effort in on the other side of the technique you know scale or spectrum double down on what you're doing over here to make sure when you do approach that kind of process uh, you can get it all to blend the other thing too is they would have been way better off rather than leaving that photo or 3d texture whatever it was that generated that in there they would have been better off drawing it like using it as a reference drawing it getting the shapes that they wanted getting the lighting that they wanted and then painting it themselves because then it would create something that felt more cohesive with the rest of the painting rather than highlighted the difference between something that looks realistic versus not looking realistic and this just isn't uh, you either that's where this has been a, a reoccurring theme you know throughout <laughs> majority 
you know, of the entries uh, this term, guys. So let's I'll, I'll yeah. take that in. A lot of these tools can help you to gain knowledge in the sense of like, OK, the light's going to be hitting it here. The shape is going to be like this in perspective. This will fit here. But unless you interpret that through the filter of your own paintbrush, through the filter of your own design choices, it will always look mismatched. It won't look like a cohesive whole. And, and yeah, let's end it on that. And that's not even like going outside the window and addressing. It, it, there is there's there's a lot of value things going on, you know, which we can't <laughs> even we really don't have time to address. But they're like. I guess this is very important. We should have addressed this first. Like, you can't even see the character, you know, yeah. all things considered. Once you take the value, there, there's a massive value problem going on. So a lot of structural foundational things are happening before the detail, before the texture. Yeah. You, you get a checkerboard of light, dark, light, dark, instead of a grouping of values that will tell you all this light stuff is outside the window, all these darker areas are inside the window, or vice versa. And it, it's really important to use value grouping and temperature grouping to let the eye know what areas are. And, you know, I talk a lot about the temperature shift between values in the sense of, like, lighter areas, you know, pick warm or cool, and the shadow pick its opposite. But another thing, you know, and I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, uh, something I learned from Dan DeSantos is he does that same temperature grouping as foreground and background. And it really helps to separate that cool. for the eye. What's that? Yeah, like do warm on the inside of your house, cool outside, or do cool outside mm -hmm. and, you know, like uh, warm inside. You, either or will work really, really well. Mm -hmm. But you want to avoid the checkerboard where everything just kind of like light, dark, like warm, dark, cool, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, warm, cool. Mm -hmm. that. Hey guys, we're back. We've negotiated. We've thought very deeply about these, hot, even. these three images here, which are like, whew, these are good ones. Really good, consistent, right? They're polished. They hit the theme very, very well. Um, but yeah, for us, it was very obvious without discussion, actually. This was number one. There was no this hemming and hawing. We both unanimously agreed in a moment that this was... Even if, if you ignored all feedback on this and just touched up that face, it, it you know, it's still going to work very, very I, well for the you. The storytelling in this one, there's the composition is interesting and there's just so much of a narrative there. Like you just, it's such a, a charming and beautiful image. It, I love it. And we had a couple of the runner-ups. We were going to go with like five runner-ups, but... We we're, we I I forced my hand and we're gonna cut it down. Three. These two are very well done. Like these yeah. are exceptionally well. The hard work shows. It's there. Couple couple things. You guys touch this up. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Very good portfolio pieces. Both of these are really cool images that, which is a little bit of work, would be fantastic portfolio images. And then also, there's just so much ambition. There's so so much in you know the one with all the figures. There's so much work into designing all of the figures, and then. Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful painterly quality and the, the framing of the light and stuff in this, you yep, know, more yep. neon brushy scene. And they're, they're both very beautiful pieces. Thank you, everybody, for watching and for tolerating us on National <laughs> Bourbon Day. This has been fun. Hope we can do this again. Of course, we'll do it again. We're going to do it next month. Um, we we yeah, should do some you. more bourbon critiques. <laughs> oh, Every every critique session just happens to be bourbon, <laughs> National Bourbon Day. I'm not making this up, guys. Look it up in the U.S. This is National Bourbon Day. It's not my excuse to drink and critique. It's true. <laughs> and by which he means June 14th. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and uh, excellent job. I'll, I'll move on to the other portions of this section. All right, guys, I'm just going to run through the last of these and just simply give as many tips as I can in his little time as I can. All right, Jack in. This is good. This has got super saturated colors, which is kind of fun. They have a nice pop to them. There is there is a fairly consistent and even level of finish to everything. The characters do pop out particularly well. I do think um, if you can get in here, I think this, the, the main part of this, which takes up a lot of the, the work is the foliage and the, the foliage still feels like it needs like some sharpening and some push and pull despite there being nice color variation in them they do feel largely flat and and maybe too synthetic for their own good you you seem to nail the right ideas with the lighting but try to give them some more form 
you know, overall and maybe lose some of these components in here. Like this piece here feels un unneeded out of place as well as all the foliage up here. That way you can get more room for the main piece to breathe. All right. Scarlet Force, how you doing? Um, you got a big tangent going on here. I definitely would try to fix that. You have the bottom of the car resting against the pot, you know, the bottom of the uh, canvas. Uh, for something like this, I'd probably just go with like a, a bit more of like a Dutch angle and get the back of the car potentially even out of it. That way you can, everything will breathe in there. And then you can kind of focus a bit more on what this is. This, this feels really weird. Like I'm not sure if this is sticking out in front of these buildings back there or if it's actually, you know, kind of behind it. I don't know. There's some awkwardness going on and you want to get rid of this one kind of soft yellow pasty color and get some neon lights in there. I think that'll also definitely help it out. But yeah, really cool car though itself. ACD design. Uh, this just needs many hours of rendering and finish. I can see underneath here there is a pretty cool drawing, but you need to learn how to, you know, group values and depict lighting. Because uh, that's really what's going to start to hold this together and cover up all your, you know, the, the roughness of the sketch which at, with actual shapes and forms. So just go on and, and, and paint it. It'd probably be too rough in this state for us to consider. Ariane. Sorry, I probably get your name wrong. This is interesting. Got a really nicely rendered scene here going on. The, the thing with this is you want to try to find a way to create some appeal for the audience, like something to relate to, something to latch onto, maybe on an emotional level. Like, is this a giant because, you know, you see like little desks and, and household objects, like a tiny little tree here. It's just marred by weird oddities like that. Like, because everything else, like, on the character seems fairly in scale. Um, but, like, there's just a lot of weird, ch like, every color in it is almost warm. With maybe the exception of some of this. Like, maybe bringing some of this background in a focal, like, uh, depth where we can see some of it a bit more. Maybe removing some of the shapes to double down on what you have here um yeah it just kind of it's kind of odd in one too many places tiberius hey this this is great um you got some great su uh, structure here even fantastic lighting as well but you're not giving the eye or the let's say the viewer in this case anything to really look onto. Like this, this piece here is truly begging for some kind of focal element here, or maybe even here where you can see the light, you know, like on top of like the ship, just really illuminating, you know, the top forms as it comes down. It, it needs something kind of like that. Otherwise, otherwise it's got really cool ideas and, you know, really tight perspective and stuff. Really great texture use too. Nello, how you doing? So when you have a composition that's like 100% based down the center and design wise is symmetrical you want to find a way to kind of create some version of asymmetry in this you're also kind of making this an added challenge and i know some of the buildings back there are slightly different but that's not enough um, and then like in this case you're blasting all of this with like a very frontal base lighting so everything is getting lit evenly i think had you created some dynamic version of light you know, in shadow, kind of hitting like a lot of this. You see the shadow of the figure that kind of cast in the background. These will have, right, their own versions, right, of that shadow as well. You could start to add a lot more, you know, dimension to this and a lot more interest. And then you can light these buildings up. But, you know, you, got, you have like a ton of just rectangles in this building that it needs a lot more detail and I think care. It's just a lot of the same thing kind of stamped and run and replaced, but otherwise it really hits the theme. Cypher of Is, hey, how you doing? Um, this is cool, it's a really cool idea. It really feels like more of like a Mad Max theme than the, uh, the challenge one. But I'd say lighten up on this airbrush. You gotta try to find a way to control these brush strokes. It, it feels way too chaotic. And then a lot of this just gets crushed, you know, kind of going out the out of the canvas. So it, again, it's got a really weird format being um, uh, like square. I, I think you try to emphasize a bit longer one and then really consider the placement of the objects in the scene. Then you could practice on the materials and brushwork. And I think that'll come together a lot stronger. 
Mono. How you doing? New name. Okay, so this is cool. You got like, an, again, a really cool vertical image. A lot of stuff going down, but enough asymmetry. Uh, you got to practice the lighting and the brushwork, you know, with a lot of this and see how you can really organize and break this down into simple shapes of light and shadow. It is really good that we can see this main silhouette getting pushed. I'd, I'd push that even further because like how these things are getting lit and it, there, there's a lot of problems with just the basic technique when it comes to just lighting you know just things up and really starting to push them i'm trying to like get in here just to kind of like if, if this is a light it should really be light if this you know we don't, we probably wouldn't want to see as thick of a cone you know like that we want to see the buildings themselves really lit up but it's yeah it's still like a bit 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 rough and you want to spend some time carefully planning that out and then just keep practicing this stuff you, i mean it'll get better and come a lot more natural over time but yeah see it's just like it goes like from thick heavy blacks to like big greens it's it's just a little all over the place in regards to the structure oliver how you doing oliver this is interesting um not sure what this was going for exactly like is this like a war poster propaganda thing like i i could never quite understand what you're trying to portray with this maybe that was me i jessica didn't understand either um you got a nice kind of um, a traditional sort of look and feel to it. I think that's cool. I think the drawing itself is actually really nice and filled with character. Um, the materials definitely consider some work on those. They're all kind of rendered like metal, like a rusted iron, ground, clothes. It's all kind of rendered a very similar thing. Again, a very common comment we had with a lot of people this month. But I continue to do some material studies for sure and work on the clarity for what it's trying to portray. Me, Harry. Hey, how you doing? This is cool. I like, I actually like how simple and, and direct this is. You actually have, uh, you know, it's a lot more consistent, honestly, than some of the options that I think that we, you know, ended up going with. Um, for this, definitely consider some of the, like, the flow and the framing on this. It does feel like it gets, like, a little too stiff for its own good. Like, this color here feels a little bit too much. You want to dial that down. Um, see something a little more like this I think will help I think if you you know grab you know entire sections you know of let, let's say like buildings and stuff I think that you could start to push a lot more color and lighting particularly on you know something like this that has focal elements like like that serves as a focal element you know like really get in there and right light up you know parts of you know your structures and then like get in there and like the windows it, it still needs like a bit more you know polish in that regard and then yeah you know, these you need a lot more detail i think just removing this highway here that just kind of truncates that whole front will also help yeah but the yellow is a nice touch you know i do like that but yeah the atmosphere starts to get way too washed out Ori, how you doing this is cool you got some really cool structure going on in here Again, it's got some interesting framing setups, you know, where we kind of see a little bit of it like that. We, you know, this is all the point. These feeling, these buildings probably feel like they're maybe a bit too much for this. I think these would all be kind of a bit smaller. And again, you could probably just hint at, you know, like a bunch more framing all of that. Um, but like this, I don't know what this is. Is like, is this piece like a massive thing that's floating up in the sky? I don't see any other buildings from there i think just like working on like this interior shot or this as an exterior by itself would have been more than enough work for you and it's just like it seems like a disjointed sort of picture where these two pieces aren't exactly coming together yet all right otherwise really really cool and I, but i love the building design and the environment you know that some of the better atmosphere we've seen this week for sure all right let's get into what the next challenge is going to be Hey guys, so the next challenge is going to be Ocean Summoner, inspired by uh, my previous piece here. You don't have to do anything that derivative of it, but, you know, have a summoner of some sorts conjuring something from the sea to do kind of whatever. You can kind of think of what that could be. All right, it could be good, it could be evil, it could be very neutral. All right, take care. Oh, it'll be due, it'll be due, um, what's it, July 15th. All right, take, take care again, guys.